Hi everyone, we're going to read the next section of Zoe in Wonderland for the Gilbert Library's uh, winter reading. Here we go. Chapter 20, The Day After Trouble Day. The next morning at school, everyone, including me, tried very hard to act normal, as if nothing strange had happened. Of course, I got a few funny looks, but no one said anything mean. Plus, Xena had been suspended for the day. Lucky Zoe. But that day at lunch in the cafeteria, something puzzling happened. A new kid named Adam York, who was in Mr. Summer's class too, came over and sat down across from me, Zoe G. Reindeer. The only person I've ever sat with during lunch is Quincy, almost always at this same table in the same corner, and since Quincy's been gone, the only person I sit with is me. He smiled and said hi, and started chomping a burger. Hi. As always, the cafeteria was crazy noisy. Most people yapping, some people hollering, wild, loud laughter, the sounds of dishes and trays. But sitting here next to Adam felt quiet. Quiet like when the class is taking a really hard test and every mind is busy thinking. Quiet like when you're so nervous everything seems to have come to a stop, including your heart. For some reason, I began checking the buttons on my sweater to make sure they were buttoned right. My clothes kind of matched today. That was good. I wondered why I'd never really noticed him before. But then again, to me, most kids at school were like streetlights, always there but hardly ever noticed. Why did he come and sit beside me? Why am I feeling weird inside? More and more whys kept coming, but no answers followed. My shyness was orbiting around me like a giant moon. I couldn't speak. Then, all of a sudden, I remembered something about him. He had a sister named Eve, like Adam and Eve, I thought in the Garden of Eden. From her spectacular treehouse in the Garden of Eden, Zoe could see clear to the horizon where the blue sky meets the bluer ocean. African elephants, gazelles, and zebras roamed the plains. Zoe didn't need a radio because all day long the birds were singing songs. A monkey waved and handed her a banana. What's BQ mean? Adam blurted, interrupting my fantasy. So that was it. He was a spy on a mission, sent in all likelihood by Xena or her puppets. I glanced over to the table where they were sitting and waited for one of them to look our way, but their eyes stayed focused on each other. Hmm, maybe he's not a spy. It means be quiet, I replied. Oh. And Adam went on eating his lunch, and I went on eating mine, and then he was finished and got up to leave. But before he t did, he told me, you're not ugly, Zoe. Okay. As he walked away, I watched him to see if he was going to stop at the table where Xena's clique was sitting to tell them what BQ means so they could make fun of me again. But he didn't. He seems nice. Maybe. Before bed that night, I stared hard at myself in the bathroom mirror from the front and sort of from the side, which is kind of hard. Not ugly. Does not ugly equal pretty? I dabbed some of Jade's pink lip gloss on my lips. It tastes like bubblegum, I thought, as I slipped the tube in my pocket. I was just borrowing. I'd bring it back tomorrow. Jade had so much makeup she wouldn't miss one tube for one day, would she? Then I used her flat iron on my hair. Was straight better than not straight, or did it just look different? Just different, I decided. When I was finished, I opened the bathroom door to find the snocks waiting outside. He, How does he always know when I'm up to something? How, I wondered. Harper glanced at the flat iron and smirked. What'd you do to your hair, Zoe? He asked. It looks way different. Then he stared at my shiny lips. Are you wearing makeup? Be cute, Harper. Just be cute. Chapter 21. Nana's Cure. Because I'd run away from school and because I'd been what everyone was calling blue, which means mostly not happy since my best friend had gone, I'd been summoned to Nana and Grandpa Reindeer's apartment for the weekend. I want you to stop this moping around, Zoe, Nana told me. It does not become you. It's not like you've had your heart broken, yet. Just like those tears we talked about that Jade used to, to make you spill, better to save that moping for later, when you'll need it. Nana got in my face and grinned. Now give me a smile. I almost smiled. I'd tell you a good joke if I knew one, but I was never good in the joke department. Don't suppose you know one. I shook my head and keep kept peeling potatoes. Nana inched closer to me until we were standing side by side. Seems to me you've grown a little, my Zoe. 
Why were people suddenly calling me my Zoe, like they owned me? The store was called Zoe's. Inside, there were rows and rows of life-size dolls for sale, and all of them looked just alike, just like Zoe G. Reindeer, except they each had on a different, extremely cute outfit. They were selling for $199.99. Zoe? Nana said. Yes. I said, seems to me you've grown a little. A little, I replied. I watched my Nana as she washed the celery and onions for the potato salad we were making. Her silver hair was pulled back into a bun and red earrings dangled from her ears. You like eggs in your potato salad, don't you? She asked as she opened a carton of eggs. Yes. Earlier, we'd gone shopping and Nana had bought me two new dresses and a pair of sparkly lavender sneakers. Even though she always treats me nice, today felt special because I barely ever have her all to myself. Nana had held my hand now and then as we shopped, and I almost told her I was too old for hand-holding, but I didn't. I really liked not sharing her. Every so often, a young lady needs to be doted on, she told me later as we sat, sat side by side, eating burgers and fries at a 50s diner. What's doted on, I asked. Spoiled rotten. I had finally smiled. Now that's my Zoe. I leaned my head into her shoulder, soaking up her flowery smell. No more running off from school. Promise me? We were worried sick, she'd whispered. For the zillionth time, I swore I would never do it again. Can I use your computer to check my email? I asked after I'd peeled the last potato. Of course, Nana replied. Expecting a note from Quincy, I suppose. Hope so. Must be really hard on Quincy with his mom being sick and having to move and go to a new school, Nana commented. I nodded in agreement and thought about what she'd said for a little while. Nana's right. It must be really hard for him. When I turned on the computer and entered my email address and password and saw that there was a new message from Quincy, that made me grin. But when I read it, the inside part of me finally started dancing again. I leaped up and ran into the kitchen. He's coming back next week, I shouted. Nana patted the top of my head. And his mom is almost done with her treatments. I told her, I know he'll be happy to see her, Nana winked. And you. For some reason, her saying that made me feel a little ashamed. With Kendra being so sick, I shouldn't even be thinking about myself. But I couldn't help it. I missed him so much and couldn't wait to have my own friend back. As if Nana were reading my mind, she asked. I never hear you talk about any other friends. You must have some, don't you? I shrugged. I'm not very good at friends. Maybe you could join a club. Not good at clubs either. Mostly people think I'm odd. Sounds like me at your age. I had a hard time fitting in, too. I stared into Nana's brown eyes. Did you wear glasses? I asked. No, but I always was tall for my age, and kids teased me something awful, she replied. How tall are you now? Five foot ten, she answered. I remembered Mrs. Warner's comment about big feet and being tall and, it, and snuck a peek at my Nana's feet. Were your feet really big, too? Nana laughed. So big I used to trip over them, but my being tall paid off later. How? Made a little book money modeling during college, and it probably helped me nab your grandpa, Nana answered. How? I repeated. He was six foot four, liked me being tall, she paused, then added, Some things are in the genes. Can't change that, Zoe. Were you shy, too? Still am sometimes. No crime in that. Nana patted the top of my head. Lots of people feel a little odd at your age. Like those shoes you keep growing out of? You'll grow out of feeling so different. I sure did. Nana had a way of being right about lots of things. I hope this was one of them. Chapter 22. A Sign. That night, as soon as Grandpa Reindeer dropped me off, the first thing I did was make a beeline to the greenhouse to give the baobabs a dose of water. They'd sprout soon, I hoped. When I finished, I headed to the house. Quincy's coming home on Saturday, I loudly proclaimed as I burst through the kitchen door, but the kitchen was empty. The dinner table had been cleared and the dishwater was, dishwasher was running. I followed the blare of the flat screen into the TV room where Jade and Harper sat, their eyes glued to the TV. When I came into the room, they didn't even look up. Shopping bags filled with the stuff Nana had bought me dangled from my arms. To get their intention, I stood in front of the screen and grinned. What are you so happy about? Harper asked. Jade eyed the bags. 
What? Did Nana buy you a bunch of stuff? I nodded. So that's all it took to make you happy again? The Snocks asked. Plus, Quincy's coming home on Saturday for the weekend. Yay, Jade said. Now you can move out of the way before you make us miss the best part. Yeah, Harper agreed. I had been gone for two whole days, and I thought Jade and the Snocks might have missed me a little, but obviously they hadn't. Silly Zoe. Where are Mom and Daddy? At least they'd be glad to see me, right? In their room, Jade said. Fighting, Harper added. About what? I asked. Jade glanced up. Money, what else? Not again. I hurried down the hallway to my parents' room. Their door was closed, but I could hear them. It's time to stop dreaming, Daryl, Mom shouted angrily. I'm not dreaming, Daddy yelled back. It's a very good offer, the best ever. We could pay off all the bills and buy a real house. A real house? What's that supposed to mean? It means this one needs a new roof, needs painting. The plumbing is a mess. The kitchen is an embarrassment. Do I have to go on? Sometimes it seems like you care more about those trees and plants than you care about us. We're one step away from foreclosure, Daryl. You could lose everything. You worry too much, Gabby. I'll sell some of the mature, mature exotic trees to that landscape architect who's been needling me. Maybe I'll get a night job. And if it turns out that we have to sell, I've got my eyes on a couple of things. Another tropical plant nursery, or maybe this time a flower farm. Saw some for sale in Oregon, one in Carlsbad, another in Hawaii, and even one in New Zealand. Always wanted to go to New Zealand. Sell the Wonderland? Weeks ago, he said he'd never sell the Wonderland. New Zealand? Mom had the same thought. New Zealand? I give up, she said in a quieter voice. It'd be an adventure. Life's supposed to be an adventure, Gabby. I'd never heard him say that before. But Mom didn't agree. I don't want an adventure. I just want a normal life and not to worry about money. You're not going to get a better offer than the one Bob Lockwood gave you today. We'd be on easy street. I don't understand what you're waiting on. For us to lose everything? There was about a minute of quiet before Daddy said in a soft voice, I'm waiting on a sign, Gabby. You and your signs. What does that mean, I wondered, waiting on a sign. I lingered outside their room, motionless, until the hallway grandfather clock ticking beside me and the noise from the TV in the other room were the only sounds. I kept thinking that this is exactly what Quincy and his parents were like before they got divorced. Right then, I wished that I hadn't heard their fight. My worry list kept growing. Silently, I counted down from 20 to zero. Then I knocked. It's me, just Zoe. I'm back. Come in, Daddy said. I turned the knob, cracked the door, and stuck my head inside. They both tried hard to put on those happy-to-see-you looks on their faces. But Mom looked tired, and Daddy's eyes had zero happiness. Did you have a good time with Grandpa and Nana? Mom inquired. I stepped into their room. Yes, I replied. The smile I'd come home with had vanished. Daddy stood from the chair where he was sitting. Then, why the sad look? I stared at the reindeer parents and asked three questions. Are you going to get a divorce? What's foreclosure? And what's a sign? Chapter 23. The Trouble, Worry, Problem, Zapper. How long have you been listening? Daddy inquired. His oh no look was pasted on his face. Long enough. I set the shopping bags on the floor. Mom faked a smile. Looks like your Nana splurged on you. Does she really think it's going to be that easy to change the subject? Think again, please. So, are you guys getting a divorce? I repeated. No, they replied in unison. What gave you that idea? Daddy asked. I'm worried because you're acting just like Quincy's mom and dad did before they went Splitsville. Splitsville? Mom asked. Yeah, his mom and dad went Splitsville because they were always fighting about money, and now you guys are doing the same thing. Daddy laughed. Three things adults should never do when kids are being extremely serious. One, laugh. Two, try to change the subject. Three, tell you to relax. My parents were now guilty of two of the three offenses. I glared at him. It's not funny, Daddy. Daddy apologized. Sorry, Zoe, but we are definitely not getting a divorce. I stared at him and asked, promise? He patted my shoulder, then gave it a gentle squeeze. I promise, Zoe, no divorce. Relax. Relax? Now they were guilty of all three offenses. But somehow the look in his eyes had convinced me he was telling the truth. Going Splitsville was off the Zoe worry list. 
My interrogation of the reindeer parents continued anyway. What's foreclosure mean? This time, Mom did the denying. It means you're late on the mortgage payment and the bank could take the house, but we are not in foreclosure yet. All I heard was yet. I had one last question for Daddy. What did you mean by waiting for a sign? Daddy gazed into my eyes. Some clue that'll tell you what to do. Something that'll happen that leads you in the right direction, like a sudden answer to a mystery. Understand? I didn't, but I nodded. One other thing. I really don't want to leave the Wonderland, and I sure don't want to move to New Zealand. Do they even speak English there? Yes, they do. Then Mom sighed. So you heard everything. <laughs> Pretty much. Daddy picked nervously at his nails. Don't say anything to Harper or Jade. We don't need them worrying, too. I promise. I was just about to leave when I remembered. Quincy's coming for the weekend, I blurted. Daddy cracked a real smile, and Mom hugged me and said that was good news. Good night, we all seemed to say at the same time. Down the hallway in the family room, I heard Jade and Harper laughing at something on the TV. They certainly weren't worrying about anything. But even though my questions had sort of been answered, I still couldn't stop worrying. Where would we live if the bank took the Wonderland? And I still didn't understand what waiting on a sign meant. Why did there have to be so many problems and troubles and worries? Zoe was a super geek tech genius, the creator of the Trouble Worry Problem Zapper app, an app that could be downloaded to your phone that allowed anyone to type in their problem, press delete, and presto changeo, problem gone. The only thing it couldn't delete was annoying people, because deleting people, no matter how annoying they are, is a crime. Almost everyone on earth had downloaded the app, making Zoe G. Reindeer a gazillionaire. Her three-story house in the Malibu Hills had a panoramic view of the ocean. Tonight, no lights from Mrs. Warner's candles next door danced on my walls, and none of her old-time jazz music played. The moon was having one of its days off, so there was total darkness, and the only sounds were the noises inside my head that even imaginary Zoe couldn't make go away. Chapter 24 A New Friend As I headed to my table in the cafeteria, I heard Zena warn her puppets. You know she'll rat you out if you say anything to her, so don't. Was Zena right? Was I going to be a rat every time someone bullied me? Would I run to Mr. Summer the way he'd instructed me to and squeal? When I'd told Quincy what had happened, he'd said, Sometimes you have to be a rat, Zoe. What did I have to lose by being a rat anyway? Quincy was my only friend. Except, maybe not. Adam was wearing a green and blue plaid shirt when he sat down at lunch across from me again. You live in that Wonderland plant place, huh? He asked. Yeah, must be interesting, Adam said. I decided to try very hard not to be shy. I took a deep breath. Sometimes, I answered, then spouted off nervously. There's all sorts of stuff, even endangered plants. My dad's a horticulturalist, which is a fancy way to say he knows a lot about plants and trees and flowers. I wondered if he was going to keep asking questions, but when he didn't, I asked one of mine. Where'd you go to school last year? In Rome, he replied. Italy? Adam nodded. Were you born there? No, I was born in Rhode Island, but because of my dad's work, we usually move every two years. So far, we lived in Sweden, Japan, Washington, D.C., Rome, and now here. My sister claims we're like animals that migrate, except we don't ever come back to the same place. At least not yet. My mom calls us nomads. I was sitting across from a worldwide voyager, and instantly I felt like a very boring girl with a life story so dull it would make you yawn a thousand times. The furthest I'd ever been from Pasadena was the Grand Canyon. Oh, I said. My mom and sister hate moving so much, but I like it because every place is a new adventure. My favorite so far is Japan. It was the coolest. Adventure? Recently, lots of people were using that word. First, Ben Rakotamalala, then Daddy, and now Adam. Can you speak Japanese, I asked? A little, but after a while you forget. You start to forget. Good thing I have lots of, picture of pictures of all the places I've been to. I could show you if you want to see. Okay, or you could email some of them to me too, I told him. Cool. I scribbled my email address on some notebook paper and handed it to him. Want mine, he asked. Sure. Questions buzzed around me like flies at a picnic. Is he just being nice? Will he really email me pictures? 
Does this mean I actually have a new friend? I hoped I'd have the answers I wanted soon. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Keep an eye out for the next section. Okay, bye!